What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Gym Floor. Subbed out Jason this week. Brought in Jessica uh, as our featured guest now. Great episode. We thought since Jace wasn't here, we'd kind of loosely talk about parenting a little bit and just the stuff that we thought about and tried to implement before uh, we had little ones come along. Turned into really just making your fucking life heats better, uh, improving your efficiencies and finding a way to live like an adult instead of just do session after session after session after session. A lot of talk about like personal growth and being willing to take chances. Um, yeah, lots of personal experience. We hope you guys take something from it. Less prescriptive this week. Hope you enjoy it. If you did, please hit the subscribe button. Makes a big difference to everything that we do. Uh, and also don't forget to go check out the website, uh, stcfit.com. Value Compass resource is still available and all the information for our coaching product, which is Standout PT, our 26-week education for upskilling for PTs program. All the information's there. Enjoy the episode. Good? I am good. I have an energy drink on the table. That's yeah. <laughs> giving, yeah. giving last night's that, sleep. That is explaining many things. Yes. I have a cold Vietnamese coffee, as always, as is tradition. I don't know how you come here and not have one. It seems upsetting. I drank one in the last podcast. Oh, did you? Yeah. Jesus Christ, you're a beast. <laughs> is that Warheads flavor? It is. Oh, my God. Oh, Do you God. want to try some? I tried it's a okay. little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I tried a little bit of one a couple of days ago, and I haven't been able to get it out of my head, so I had to buy one. My God. It is delicious. How much caffeine is that? I don't know. I didn't read. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know. 160 megs, two coffees. Is that 160 only? Only? Are you kidding? No, that's fine. That's like one That's like one barista coffee. Nah, barista coffee is like 80. Uh, my brother in Christ, I was pregnant, so I know the ca- the milligram oh, caffeine of everything. We're Googling it. We're Googling it. Average instant coffee is anywhere from 60 to 80 to 100. Like yeah. that's instant coffee. A barista coffee is like 150. How much caffeine Plus. is in an espresso? Not 100 grams. Single shot. 63. No fucking way. Yeah, so you have a double shot. It'd be 120. Yeah, so 60 to 80. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, that's one coffee in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I And this is I'm pretty sure these are doubles as well. Almost four hundred milligrams of caffeine before So that hour and a half drive you're worried about, it's gonna be forty minutes. <laughs> I think, I talk, I drive, I drink everything faster. So put your seatbelts on, fam. This is gonna be Anyone it, actually, no one is safe. I'm going west to far east. Like, no one is safe. <laughs> this is a nice blend. The Vietnamese coffee was beautiful. Yeah, it's nice and fruity. I got it. There's got my like first dud one in part from Padre for a really long time. Oh, because they're different. Every we get fortnightly the delivery. Subscription, they're yeah. always different. What was what was the dud about it? What flavor was it? I don't know. I don't. I haven't worked out what part of it I don't like. Mm-hmm. But. It's the, just the combination is not working for me. Well, that's not very helpful. Yeah. Gonna, it's just shit, yeah. Jess. It's just shit. <laughs> I just don't fucking like it. I can't it. break down exactly. I don't like any generally, um, mm. both anything bitter. So like whether it's wine or whether it's coffee, yeah. floral blends yep. don't sit well with me. Yeah. So this is that. Of course it is, because I said I gave you an answer. Yeah, no, it's like no, it's not. I don't like it. Yeah, yeah, it's like it probably needs to be like a cold drip or something. Yeah. Then it would be nice, mm, but it's yeah. fucking cold. Yeah, it's I like don't. It's zero degrees when I'm having it. Not all bad, coffee don't. is cold coffee in my humble opinion. You don't drink any warm coffee, eh? No. Why? I. Tell me about that. Okay. <laughs> so it all started when my dad left. <laughs> and he just made a piping hot latte. <laughs> dad said, I'm going to the shops to get a coffee. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> 
my mom watches the podcast. So hi, mom. <laughs> What's up, Daphne? Um, <laughs> um, no, I don't. I think I just got so used to. I it was either short coffees or cold coffees. Mm. And I had a few hot coffees and I was like, it's not the same. So this is going to sound so dumb. So when you have a takeaway cup, this is a universal experience for anyone that drinks long blacks. I also only drink black coffee aside from Vietnamese coffee. Mm -hmm. So I don't like the taste of milk or lattes. Yeah. Because um, you're a grown up. Because I'm a grown up. I will fucking drink a milkshake if it didn't make me shit myself. <laughs> but <laughs> no dairy and coffee for me. Yeah. I just like the taste of coffee. It's a dangerous combination. <laughs> we don't need to talk about <laughs> I can't go on the podcast without talking about shit no, Every sorry, time Because we talk about shit. coffee every yeah. time Set you up Sorry it's, um, it's so fine Everyone should know what I'm intolerant to by now <laughs> um, No, so when you have a takeaway coffee cup mm. And you have a long black in it When it's hot, it spills everywhere Okay It, it happens to everyone It leaks out the sides Yeah, I yeah, don't yeah know the stuff expands, right? Right, so the thing that I want to know is, does does the viscosity of coffee change based on the temperature? Because I can have a cold one and it doesn't do that. But I don't know, it used to annoy me because I would only drink coffee when I was face-to-face -face PTing yeah. and it would spill all over me. So yeah. I'd just let it sit there, whatever, and then I'd scull it when it cooled down. And I was like, why don't I just get it cold? And I was like, this just tastes so much better. Mm. But I don't know. And everything about hoffee, hot coffee, I'm like, well, you can't. Drink it because it's too hot. Then you got to wait for it to cool down, and it's only and you miss the window, right? Yeah. What's the? <clears throat> if I've... I get an iced coffee, aside from the, if you're a barista that has someone's asked for an ice long black, and you put ice cubes in a hot long black, there's a special place in hell reserved for you. Your name is on the fucking door. Yeah. Um, I think that's actually like if you're in Europe and you ask for an iced coffee. Well, that's what you get. That's fantastic. I'm not in Europe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's how I make it my home too. No, that's it's not iced. That's cooling it down, maybe. Yeah, but I just put ice in the container and in the cup, and then just turn the machine on, and then it's cold. <laughs> you do, you do one cup. Yeah. I'm going to change your life. Do the shot, mm -hmm. right? And even if you have instant coffee, you can I do, do it. Not. Don't no, stop me like, like that. with no with. <laughs> you can make. Have you ever made like a like? They're really good. The instant coffee is good for smoothies. So if you okay. make like a protein smoothie or whatever, or like you want coffee in a smoothie, it tastes a little bit nicer because the coffee taste isn't as aggressive. Interesting. Um, yeah, Zoya, shout out to you for teaching me that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's that. But so you do the shot of coffee. You have a separate cup that has like a third of cold water mm -hmm. and ice in it. Mm-hmm. Then you pour the shot in and then you fill up the rest with cold water. And then the coffee goes cold instantly and it stays ice and yeah, it doesn't okay. melt that the ice. Sense. It's delicious. Yeah, I understand that. Anyway. I see how you got there. Thank you so yeah. much. Cold coffee so, is elite. I don't <clears throat> I don't know. I'm willing to try a whole like I'll try anything twice. Like I am willing to try any coffee variation. Mm -hmm. So far the only one is the salted caramel cold brew. So it's like from Starbucks. Yeah. It's a cold brew and it's like a thin layer of like a cream yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. It's like a, I don't know. The whole thing is like 50 calories if you get the small one. And the salted caramel drizzle, that's Oof. the only coffee that's that- pretty fucking good. It's so good. That's Sounds it. like a dessert. <laughs> and it just tastes like a cold brew. And then like the cream like drops through. Yeah. And it tastes like slightly milky, mm -hmm. but it's not enough for it to like change the whole flavor. But I'll try anyone's coffee variations if they think they're going to win. I'll, honey is not one that I can get around. I'm on the honey train. Mm. I didn't rate it. Like I also so don't like honey, though. Loz asked for it at our house, and I was like, how dare you? Rude. And then she was like, you should try it. And then my dad swears, and like this is very... He's a, he's a pa now, so I'm allowed to say this. It's a very old man thing. He's like, it gets rid of your hay fever. And I'm like... Only if it's from... Do you know the thing behind it? Yeah, it could be within 25 Ks. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I sorted it. It's all right. Got yeah. local raw honey on yeah. top of it. It's supposed to really work. And look, I started at mid-spring, so I can't say for sure, but I have been 100% fine since. But it was just an easy way to get honey into... Because I was like trying to... I've had the same breakfast for like 10 years. Mm-hmm. 
and I've put honey in it, it tastes different and upsets me. <laughs> so I was like, maybe if I put it in my coffee, that's something else that I'll definitely have every single day. And then, yeah, Loz had it and I was like, nah, that's not, it's yeah. not a thing, but it's pretty good. I, no, I don't know. I've got like a food aversion to honey though. Yeah, I've well. only got two food aversions, just overall. One of them's black tea and honey. And it's because of the same thing that my mum has like, she tricked me with a milky black tea with honey in it when I was sick once. Yeah. Fucking threw that shit up. Oh no. And I've not been able to drink black yeah, tea or honey with without it. gagging. Yeah. I can have honey cooked in food though. So like honey soy chicken. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's elite. Does it, does it count if it's cooked in coffee? Because coffee's hot. <laughs> <laughs> honey soy chicken i was like that's disgusting um yeah so in terms of the heat thing so i've recently moved to long max yes getting the heat window Mm. is very challenging very challenging just i'll just stick to cold coffee yeah i think I'll yeah. try. I'll Me try. too, because I order a long Mac and I'm usually working and I get distracted and then I drink a cold coffee. <laughs> yeah. Or people that are like, wait till you're a parent, you're never going to have a hot coffee again. I'm like, yeah, fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> I do fucking like it anyway. Yeah, like like I've never been busy in my life before. Mm. Mm-hmm. How is How is dad life treating you now that you are... I mean, you've been into the full swing of work for a while now, but yeah. Yeah, between the expos and... The real reality, like, he has been here now for over three months. And yeah, it's 15 weeks tomorrow. Yay. Yeah. yeah, it's really good. I love it. Good. Um, Obviously, it's hard, but it's so worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm having a really good time with it. I love that. We're um doing sleep training at the moment, so that's that's a fun thing to explore. And when I say we, my wife is doing it. Yeah. And I'm just help (laughs) i think it's also important before like everyone like blows their minds being like you should be supporting your wife they have a great shared agreement between sharing the load (laughs) i will jump in and say that yeah and we actually had this conversation last night like we're we're gonna part of the today's topic is gonna be talking about pre-kids because we know most people that listen don't have kids yet yeah but just one of the the topics I would say pre kids as well is just your expectations of who's going to do what. It's yeah. fucking so big, man. Because it's like so many people I know have not had the conversation, and it's like, fucking dad's not showing up, or he's not helping, or he's never here, or whatever. For sure. And then he's like, she's not fucking grateful for me going to work, and blah blah blah. And it's like, did you guys have a conversation about who was supposed to be doing what, when, and where? Honestly, <laughs> I don't. Stop going on the Bonds website and looking at onesies. Don't worry about your nursery because your baby shouldn't necessarily be using their nursery in the first few. Mine doesn't know what it looks like. Right? Like, <laughs> as in, like, you shouldn't be that far from a newborn. Let's just, let's just not even say the fourth trimester, the 12 weeks. Yeah. Like, your baby is only going to be on you for at least a couple of months. Yeah. Don't ask me when Parker went into his. Yeah. Like, that's it. <laughs> you know? But, like, don't worry about the color of the nursery, getting the nursery done, packing your hospital bag. I mean, mm. sure, do that. Probably but do that bit. Yeah, yeah, like not as early as you think it needs to be done. Yeah. Um, don't worry about the child's coming home out for it if yeah. you're having a baby in hospital and you're not doing a home birth or, you know, what the announcement's going to look like. Just talk to your support network. Mm. One, yes, your partner, because that's going to be the most important one. Yeah. But Tell people how you will need them. Yeah. And what your expectations are, what their expectations are, Mm -hmm. and then you can get the Venn diagram happening and make it overlap. Yeah. Because that's that's the killer. What you feel like they should be doing or what you expected them to want to be doing may not be what they want or what they expect. Yeah. And that's like even, yeah, with grandparents and stuff like that. Like that conversation is so... Yeah. So, so important. Like I think it's true in any relationship all the time. Yeah. But then when you add a kid, it's like emotions are 10x. Hormones are fucking 10x. Yeah, it's stuff that you can and can't control. Mm. Like, you're, you know, if you absolutely will not get a full night's sleep in the early days because your child needs to feed overnight. Yeah. So, you're not going to. So, 
your hormones are going to really carry, like as a mother, like your hormones are going to carry you through. Doesn't mean you don't feel tired. Yeah. It just means that you still feel gratitude and appreciation when you wake up and see the baby the next you still morning. Like them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where those little eyes look at you and you're like, you're not so bad. Yeah. You Some- screamed for an hour and then smiled at me. It's all forgiven. Literally. Literally. Yeah. But, you know, you you do just do it. Like you do just manage, but it starts like the main reason why I asked is like you're in this like fourth you've passed the fourth trimester now. No longer considered a newborn. Yeah. How crazy is that? He's yeah. so little. He's so cute. I got cuddles today. Um, <laughs> he, my ovaries are like, dun, 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 dun. we exist. Yeah. Um, <laughs> go back. Um, yeah, but stop that. Stop that. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but no, like, and now you're just like expected to go on about life. Like, yeah. The newborn haze is lifted. Yeah, hormones, you're fine now. Yeah, yeah, yeah hormones yeah. are kind of, they're not regulated yet, like, because Amy is still breastfeeding, so she's yeah. obviously still going to, but there's drops and there's peaks and, like, somewhere between now and six months, Amy's hair's going to start falling out too. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just going to happen and, like, all these weird things happen and you just expect it to go on with life. Yeah. But. Yeah, it's definitely, like, the the silent part. It's like the the messages and all of that, like, are you guys doing okay? Do you need anything? Like, that sort of starts to dry up after when, the first couple of months. And then life actually kicks off and you're like, help! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I think I think um, we're pretty lucky because life was probably more chaotic. Got the first four weeks off and then it was like work every single weekend for the next eight weeks. Yeah. So, I think it's actually been where we've not, where we've had to transition back into normal life, it was chaos. Yep. So now it's like we're kind of found Chill. a routine and we're figuring it out. It feels a bit easier. Love that. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm having a really good time. I really like it. I absolutely love to hear it. Thank you. Um, We have questions. Then we're going to talk about more parenting stuff. Slay. Because I get, I don't know about you, but I get a lot of like younger, in particular men, that... Don't engage with my stuff that much. The second that LJ's on the stories, they're about it. And I even had some feedback of like, one of the boys messaged me, he's just like, fuck, I never thought any of that about parenthood. Yeah. So it's like, I think it's useful. Maybe stuff that I wish I had thought about when I was younger <laughs> as well. And you know what? The advice is not unsolicited because if people don't want to hear it, they can just turn off the podcast. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> we'll uh, put it at the end. Yeah. <laughs> but we did get put up questions for uh, everything and I've got a couple that are probably more suited to this pod. The STC Fit podcast this week, by the way, is fire. Just nailed it. So make sure you tune into that on Wednesday. Uh, this one's really interesting because I'm really curious to see your take on it. Uh-oh. What traits do we all share that has driven us to our current levels of success? The first one that just like popped into my relentlessness. Yep. I don't, that just like instantly popped into my head because mm. the ability to pivot and just keep going and just stay at something. Yeah. I feel like it's something, we all just make it happen relentlessly. Yeah. That's the first word that popped into my head. I mean, I have to think about it more now. <laughs> <laughs> now you go and then I'll think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I agree 100%. So then it's like, well, where does that come from? Yeah. And I think it's just whether it's curiosity, whether it's naivety or overconfidence or I don't know what it is. I think it's more curiosity and experimentation is fun for us just like willing to try shit even if it doesn't work yeah that a little bit the lulu like (laughs) 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 we definitely have a little bit of that but i think because we all are so self-confident we come together we're like this fucking transformer that like goes together and we all believe in ourselves and each other so much that it's like even if it doesn't work out What's the worst that can happen? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I think that ability to, uh, I can't say there's no fear because we definitely, we feel the fear and we still do it. Um, yeah. Yeah. We yeah. also have similar, per- oh, actually, 
we don't have similar personalities. We do in some ways, but definitely not in others. Yeah. Different characteristics, but similar personalities. Yeah. I think the values thing is the main part. Like yeah. If, they, if that's the personality, like all our values align pretty well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think honestly, the person that asked this question actually had a chat and a coaching call with him yesterday about just like how we ended up with 15 coaches was just we had two dudes in the gym that we liked that were doing shit that were going to had either given or were about to give notice. And we were just like, you're doing this fucking wrong. Like, yeah. do it this way. <laughs> Come and work with us for a bit. We'll help you out. And then it worked. Yeah. And it was like, oh, well, that's interesting. What could we do with that? Yeah. Oh, let's make this. So that, And then it's like, well, these eight parts of that thing worked and these six were fucking shit. Yeah. So let's keep that and let's do another version. And then let's do another version. Let's do, and like There's no end game. Like we all just Oh, it sounds so cliche. I hate myself for this. But like we all just want to be better. Yeah. We all just want to do better. And there's no end game to that. And what that looks like when I started here over a year and a half ago. Still can't believe it's only been a year and a half, but also how the fuck has it already been a year yeah. and a half? Um it we didn't imagine that what we're doing now is where we would be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, we hadn't even had a discussion about gyms yet. No. Like, we... we <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah, everything just looks completely different, but it's like we are aware of our weaknesses and we lean we lean into our strengths. Yeah. We all lean into yeah. our strengths and we all have different strengths and I think that that helps as well. We're not... We have similar personalities, but you guys never looked for a cut, copy, and paste of mm. yourselves. Yeah. And me learning that I didn't have to be a copy and paste of you guys and us yeah. understanding <laughs> our own strengths and how to lean on each other for weaknesses and like, is probably the biggest thing that's helped us catapult as well. That was a huge lesson we had to learn early because Jace and I used to... Everything we did, we did the same. Yeah. So when we had coaches, it was like, you get a coach, I get a coach. You get a coach, I get a coach. You present, I present. You Like, yeah. it was like, you're doing half of the work and I'm doing half of the work. As soon as we were like, actually, let's do different. You're really good at this and you're really good at this. If we both just do those things, we'll be much more efficient at doing the thing and yeah. both of us will be happier. And like, that fucking changed everything. And then you've come in with another dynamic that you're good at other stuff. It's like, just be, you don't have to, like you said, be a copy of each other. Yeah. Just being able to sit in and be like, this is what I'm really good at and executing it. I think the hard part is like, when you're coming up, you have to be everything. Yes. Every trainer listening is like, well, I don't have that because I'm my yeah. own fucking accountant. <laughs> correct. Correct. And like, but eventually you get to the point where you can outsource and whether you go into partnership and stuff. Like we, I get asked all the time, like, how did you find a partner? I'm like, dude, I can't, I can't even tell you. It truly to is do a it. they find you situation. Yeah. Because otherwise, you're trying to force things to fit. Like it's yeah. like looking. That's what do people say? Like whenever you're looking for a partner, like yes, you've obviously got the awareness that you want to be with somebody. But most great success stories are like, well, I didn't expect it to happen then. Yeah. Or in this way. Yeah. And, like, that's often how it happens. Like, yeah. you can't force it because that's when your relationship falls apart because you're only looking for the thing, the good things. Yeah. You don't pay attention to the rest of it. It's, like, the same deal with business partnership. And, like, Jason and I weren't even that good of friends. No. When well, we I don't know, but... <laughs> yeah. When we started working together, we weren't... We did collab stuff together and we weren't... We didn't hang out on weekends. Yeah. Like... Yeah, it was just, we was totally different. I still had my circle of friends. He had his circle of friends and we were not from the same place. Yeah. Over time that turned into a friendship. But like, yeah, people come and they're like, oh, was it because you were friends or was it like, how did you pick? It was just like, we just did it, shit together and it worked really well. Yeah. And his skill set complemented my skill set and vice versa. So it just flowed. Yeah. And then I think like it, with the carbon copy thing is a mistake we made coming through was like, we tried to, we've had other people in similar positions to you in the past that we tried to create, like, we would say, like, fuck, I wish we could clone ourselves. And then we're like, cool, this person's experienced and we think they've got what it takes to do all the thing, go do it. And it just fucking fell on its ass. Yeah. Because they weren't, they probably weren't just doing what they liked and what they were good at and what 
so instead someone coming in and it's just like we just want you to be you do you really well because that'll do really well for everything else and just allow that to happen um but yeah to coming back to the actual question i think curiosity to see if stuff will work yeah i <laughs> yeah have nothing value to add that's yeah. that's just kind of it trust that yeah curious cu- curiosity without being outcome focused y- yeah yeah it's funny we did the episode that came out last week jason and i were like what would you do if you started again mm. and we both built face-to-face businesses online like when i say built like this is what we would do and I was telling Amy about it. And I was like, fuck, sometimes it's tempting to just... Because it would have been working like six hours a day, four days a week. Going back to face-to-face? Yeah. So oh, like I think about half it. Half face-to-face, some online and just only doing that. And I was like, I said to my wife, like, yeah, wouldn't be so bad. She was like, you'd fucking hate it in like five months. Because you would have like clocked it and that you'd just be yeah. insatiably bored. Do you know how this will be like, I mean, we're on learn now, but I'll talk to you about it later. I've like already pre-planned for when we open our gym. Yeah. What my side hustle coaching business is going to be. <laughs> yeah. I've already yeah. got a coaching business, but I've already planned a second one to capitalize on the fact that I'm going to have a face-to-face location. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, I get a sec, I get a second shot at it because I'm gonna have to be on, yeah, on the floor, yeah, boots on the ground again, which I'm really excited about. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, I'm gonna change this. Yeah, I'm gonna do something different. I'm like, yeah, I need to speak to you guys. <laughs> yeah, it's but getting to redo it. But yeah, I would be so bored otherwise. Like if we weren't building a gym and building a business and having that external role. Yeah, yeah, no, you'd do it for a little <laughs> bit and be like. I actually can't earn more money right now. Yeah. I need to put my time elsewhere. Yeah, I'd be like talking to the managers. So like, how do I buy this place? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, like, how do I manage all of the other PTs for you? Like just, yeah, there'd be other... Did you say you were a franchise? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Just, I'd have to... I couldn't. I couldn't stay still that long. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that's... Maybe that's the one. Like, just have a dysfunction where you have an inability to stay in one spot. And only do one role. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, advertising. Should coaches use paid ads, Google or Facebook, etc.? Is your current contact, is your current content getting you leads within your own environment that you have currently got? Mm. Are you getting, even if in a small volume, are you, are the leads that you're getting ones that we say good, good ones, yeah. people that you actually want to hear from, even if in a smaller volume, like, are you getting that? If yes, I think potentially maybe you're onto something. Yeah. But if you're not even attracting people that you want to work At with all. now, you're going to attract maybe more people that you don't want to work with if you do pay for ads. Yeah. You need proof of concept first. Yes. There needs to be, I'm posting content that's bringing in one person a month. And we obviously talk about outreach and stuff a lot. And I still think that if you want to build your business quickly, I'll put the post up during the week. Like you want to make an extra thousand dollars a week, talk to 150 people. Yeah. It's literally that easy. Yeah. Well, simple, not easy. Yeah. You sound like a typical business advice. Yeah. It's that easy. Yeah. <laughs> Sim- it's that simple. If you can execute yeah. that, you can, you'll add a thousand dollars to your book. So if you're able to do that, but you're at the point where it's just like, you know what? like sitting on DMs and doing all that and the engagement and stuff. I've got too much else going on. I'm literally launching this within the next two weeks. Probably going at the last month I've been going at one a week, probably average inquiries to a month. Yeah. If I'm not driving it, it's one a month. And if I'm driving it, it's two right now it's going pretty well and it's one a week. Yeah. So I know that if I can continue with my organic content, that's working at the moment because I'm getting a client a week, turn the dial up so I can do less of the engagement stuff. And for me, it's like, okay, so just for context, minimum spends at least 200 bucks a week. Yeah. If you want to do paid. Yeah. So don't do a $5 boost post. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't work. It doesn't and if work. anything, it makes shit worse. Like speaking to Crystal and stuff, she's like, it just buries 
your account. Yep. So thousand dollars a month is usually baseline. Yep. That most agencies you go to, if you're like, I'm gonna do marketing, they're gonna be like, you need at least thousand bucks a month just for Meta to learn what's working. So if you've got that in place, I my math is my coaching's eighty bucks a week. If I can if I pay two hundred dollars a week, will I run at more than three clients extra? And will I net more time if I'm not having to do the engagement stuff myself? Yep. If that comes back as a yes, then I'm in. Yep. If it comes back as, well, I'm getting zero, so I'm going to multiply zero by $1,000, <laughs> that's called losing $1,000, <laughs> unfortunately. So, <clears throat> yeah, if, you don't, if you're not hitting and landing now and you're not able to take a client from a like, a story, an engagement, a reply, or whatever, and yep. turn them into a client, yep. you're not going to be able to do it from paid either. Yeah. Like we did the math on um, Inside Sports. So if you guys have watched an ad recently and that's why you're at the podcast, welcome. You're about to find out what we're doing too. <laughs> so we, all of last year, boosted the podcast clips. Yep. Well, like actually ran them as ads. We didn't boost them. We, our revenue was impacted, it went down about 45% when we stopped. Yeah. Versus the ad spend, we were, what the change was, was about 4X. Yeah. So it's like our business would run 4X on the ad spend. So we were like, turn that back on. Yeah. Because we know when people listen to the podcast, they like us enough and they see enough value to come and do our premium product, which is then our PT and that works. Yeah. If we, it was a deliberate test at the time to be like, well, so everything's doing pretty well and it feels organic. So let's just take paid away and see what happens. What yeah. happened was we lost it was not. fucking money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you need to come at the other way. Like it should still be working and then you're adding a multiplier. Yep. Awesome. Well answered. Thank you. I try. <laughs> <laughs> Quick break in the episode, guys. I just want to ask you one question. Are you running a business or are you working a job? Running a business means thinking like a business owner, having systems that do all the grindy work for you, a service that's guaranteed to get your clients results, social media and referrals that are driving business to you and getting leads that you always close. If instead you feel like you're lost, you're stuck, you're at the mercy of your clients, you're just working another job. If that's you, you need to check out Standout PT. It's our signature education program, a 26-week online course designed to take you from working a job to actually running a business. The average coach that goes through Standout PT and completes all the modules gets a 300% increase in revenue inside their business. We have weekly workshops, weekly Q&As, and over 30 units for you to go through, or with text and video to make sure you're totally covered for everything you need in your business. Just head to stcfit.com, navigate to the Standout PT page and book yourself a free, no obligation discovery call and see if Standout PT is right for you. Back to the show. Um, okay, so I prompted you earlier in, earlier in the week whenever I spoke to you mm -hmm. that we have a lot of people listen to the podcast and I know for me, I reckon I was maybe 26, 25, 26 and I was doing 40 sessions a week, 5.30 a.m. starts. It was like 5.30 till, usually a gap in the middle, but 5.30 till like 10.30, mm -hmm. train, go home, sleep, go back at four, work till 8.30, go home, sleep, get to Friday lunchtime, hate the entire universe, stay in bed for a day and a half, enjoy my Sunday and go back to work. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm going to be 30 in five years. At the time, I was in a long-term relationship and I was like, by that stage, that's going to be like, I'm going to be in trouble if I'm not married and there's a kid and all that kind of stuff. I was like, yeah. this is not, I can't do this forever. And that's when I probably started treating business like business. Turns out I had another few years. <laughs> 30, 34 once LJ actually came along. But that's when I started to think about how do I structure things in a way that this is sustainable into my 30s? I know you had Parker obviously younger. Yeah. 
did, were you conscious a couple of years before to go like, I need to set myself up to be able to do this or was yeah, it Yeah, like- I... Definitely. So Parker was planned based on where I was at with my health, with my autoimmune disease. Yeah. But that was a shorter term plan. So that was brought forward by the fact that yeah. the timing was, I was one of the people that could use the uh, closures of things Yeah. to my benefit yeah. in 2021. So yeah. Parker was born at the end of 2021. Um, <laughs> conceived when we thought everything was... Done at the end of 2020. Hey, we're free again. Yeah. No, you're not. Yeah. Enjoy that child in your house. You can't leave. (laughs) Um, But yeah, no, definitely. And I think that. So what you were saying with your schedule of PT and like what your days looked like, that was my 20 to 24. Yeah. That's what I looked like at that age. Um, And then, you know. It got to a point where I was like, I can't do this long term because I'm just burying myself. Yeah. Um, that's when I got on top of small group training yep. and learning what small group training was. And I went online in 2018 yep. um, and had a hybrid model from 2018. Once again, like that was emails and spreadsheets and yeah. Instagram and Facebook messages. Yep. Um, but, you know, it was what it was yeah, then. Fuck. I used to get people to copy and paste prompts in a face in a messenger chat. That was their check in. Love that. <coughs> Mine was done via email. Yeah. I did it all in emails for the most part. Um, because I lose everything. <laughs> well, so did I. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I definitely did. And it was more so I guess like for me it was twenty twenty, so it's not as relatable now. Yeah. Um but it was forcing everything to be streamlined, but the big thing that I didn't want to do it alone in a sense that I wanted to work in a team environment. Yeah. But then having Parker made me realize that. So I don't know. It was like, so I had like a few spanners thrown in the works, but yes, planning to stay home with him and like not having to go back to work in like a face-to-face capacity. I chose to go to pick it up for a couple sessions a week. Yeah. Um, for social interaction, I'm a very, very social person, which Ben and Jason are just on the other end of. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yes, there was definitely so a lot of work to. You said you realised that you wanted to be part of a team after Parker. Was that just like the emotional load of having your own thing? Like I what- yeah. So I obviously worked like for myself. Like even when I worked at other gyms, I was like a sole trader. Um. I, it was feeding into my personality type as well, but also the way that, and this is something that obviously we're in the parent side of things now and something to really, really, really think about, especially the girlies. Um, I'm an incredibly career driven person and I always knew that I wanted to continue working after Parker, but I also know how I wanted to raise my child and that was not for me to put him into daycare from whenever I could and have... Yeah. Somebody else raising him. Mm-hmm. Um, so a very important thing for me and still now at two and a half years old, Parker goes to daycare for two five-hour sessions a week. The rest of the time I have one day um, one grandparent helps and another day another grandparent helps. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm raising my own child. Yeah. Um, and time blocking, navigating a way to do that. I wanted to progress in my career whilst simultaneously wanting to be there for my child. And I was like, yeah. Plus I just, I needed people to bounce ideas off and yeah. So I would have either gone into a course or like gone to look. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I don't know, very different to you, I guess. Yeah. But because I knew that I'd be spending like 90% of the conversations I have at the moment are about uh, trucks Dogs, (laughs) Dogs, <laughs> farm animals. <laughs> um, so having that social interaction is yeah. something that I knew that I was going to want as yeah. well. So my my conversations bit. are: Am I still fun, or do you just want mum? That's that's like how close yeah. are we are to you want food? 
Yep. So it's like the metric of how awesome dad is. Yep. So if I've just, if he's just eaten, You're dad's the, best. the fucking best. You Don't are the care about mum. Yep. Like no smiles for mum, no chats for mum like he was earlier. Yep. Sitting on you talking to me. It's like yep. dad's the fucking best. Dad is each. And then over that. 45 minute window it's just like you're less cool because there's boobs over there yeah I- <laughs> <laughs> agreed yeah yeah yep. it's interesting yeah that's but- cool I like I don't even know when I decided the team thing was a thing I just I just thought I couldn't do it on my own and I was just like and at the time so dad's been admin since the beginning yep um Got business management experience, um, very good in the back end, very system driven, the opposite of me in every way. I actually just heard very good back end then. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, Michael with the dumpy. Get it. Get it. It's <laughs> been doing those Bulgarians. Um, and then just had a good working relationship with Jace and seems to, it's, real, it's funny, man. So I listened to a book like last week about the, it's like the entrepreneurial myth. Yeah. That everyone thinks that they're an entrepreneur and most of them are technicians that then try and open jobs because they hate their boss. Yep. And it's like you need three types of people. You need the entrepreneur that thinks about the future. Yeah. Then you need the manager that thinks about, really looks at the past mostly and looks at data yep. and keeping shit under control. And then you have the technician that thinks about right now, well, how does this work? How does it get done? Yeah. And the three of us just came together with that really, really easily. Yeah. So... Yeah, I think it was, I didn't wake up and be like, I need a team. Well, let's take a step. We'll go before the team thing then, like, and how we planned it. Because I didn't just, like, knock on the door and be like, well, I mean, I did tell you that I was going to work here. (laughs) (laughs) It's a very me thing. I'm hiring you to find out if you're as good as I think you are. And if so, I want a job. Correct. <laughs> That's exactly how I'm here right now. And anyone that knows me listens to that, they're like, that is such a fucking jest thing to do. Yeah. And anyone else is like, That's really arrogant. It is. Yeah. Um, I am. And But she did. I did. But I also didn't just say, you know what? I want to work in a team because I'm failing. Yeah. I had a nurtured audience yeah. that Yeah, you brought a ton of value. I could bring something. So if someone else is like, fuck, do I need to work with other people? Cool. Okay. So what is in your backyard? Mm. Like, what do you have to take over? So I had a very loyal following of people, like a a nurtured audience. I had my own clients. I was already running like workshops and I was already doing all of these things whilst being a mother that I had done over the years. And I was able to bring that value and like bring something else to the team. So I think it was, but the thing that I was lacking is, you know, everything that we've spoken about, the like other strengths and weaknesses of other people. But yeah, I think that if I was to go back and do it again for myself, like what's a, what's a question that you would have asked yourself? So mine for me would have been, what is the first year so one financial forecast, like yeah. how much time do you want to take off? Do you want to take off? Um, and do you want to put your child into child care? Like what is that gonna look like? That's a big question to ask. Yeah. But that would be the first one that I would. Mm. But what would you Yeah, so we were the same. So Amy is obviously had her own business has had it for probably not long after I met us like seven years yeah but I was doing a full time for two or three yeah beforehand and we'd sort of talked about like courses and all of that kind of stuff leading up and then we were like oh we'll just ease back in um I'll be able to take him at night you'll be able to do calls whatever like however that sort of plays itself out but she'd always had trouble with like she probably needs a business partner yeah. Because she's the technician. Yeah. Incredible at what she does. Feedback, retention, all of that's insane for the role that she's in in particular. But I fucking hate social media. Yeah. Hates creating content. Hates doing all of that stuff. So she probably needs someone to come in as like with that entrepreneurial kind of idea. Like, you're the talent. Let me build the thing. Um, so once... LJ came along. We so we did. She ran one workshop for one of the standout PT 
team. And I think it started at 6.30. So I was like, I'll take LJ for a walk. Usually takes five, 10 minutes to get him down. So I left at 6.20, intent, go for a walk, maybe 15 minutes, he'll be asleep, come back and I can chill out. So he screamed <laughs> on that walk, like that like painful, mm-hmm. horrible scream. Yep. For Stomach comes out of your asshole kind of scream. Yep. Sweats. Yep. Yeah. So 40 minutes, I walked around the neighborhood with him like that, got him to sleep. Okay. Because her office is in front of the house. So I couldn't walk in the house with him screaming or she would have lost her fucking mind. Oh, yes. So get him to sleep, get inside, take a photo of the two of us. We're great. He's asleep. Take as much time as you need. 10 minutes later, he woke up. I ran to the other end of the house, closing every door on the way. Yeah. Shh, 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 shh. Soundproof. Screamed. And I was like, shower's goat move. He's always calm in the shower. Get him in the shower. I got five minutes. Fucking howling. Mm. I'm like looking at my watch and she'd seen the message that said we're fine. So she ran over 15, 20 minutes. And she came out. I was like fucking shaking. Yeah. Just like, and he just wanted to feed. Yeah. Bottle wasn't an option. Just needed mum, whatever. And I was like, I will work your job. For us to never do this again. Yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, the the three calls at night that you want to do, I'll work those hours. Yeah. And you just do him. Yeah. Because that's what lights you up right now anyway. And at some point you want to go back to work. Amazing. But right now. I'll fucking do it all. Do whatever else yeah. needs to be done. I obviously being on the opposite and I'm the person that didn't have to go into an office or do anything like that. But I'm just trying to like think, I'm like, wow how do we approach this from a practical advice thing for people? And I can't believe we have just like not even mentioned this one thing yet. If you want parental leave payments, Mm. can you please make sure your books are in order? Because for you to even have like (laughs) any opportunities to have this downtime initially to even start planning for what work's going to look like after that. Yeah. For fuck's sake. And they'll pay it late. Oh, they will pay it. I think we got ours like week six. Yeah. I... Just went and visited a friend's newborn and I think they're on week four or five and they just got their payments as well. And we opted for upfront and they just were like, nah. Why would we? (laughs) You're getting it weekly. Like, okay, fuck you too. (laughs) Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, so definitely. Nothing's going to go to plan. Nothing's going to go. That's probably an important point though. Most people don't realize you do actually still get maternity leave as a business owner. I think you have to prove like 20 hours a month or something. It's not much. It's not much, but it is for a year. Yeah, it's just so, over a sustained period of time. Yeah. yeah. So if if this is something that yeah, so this is like the advice that I wish my parents sat me down and told me. Yeah. Right? Like as in Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're gonna raise a child. Don't tell me how to raise my child. Tell me this stuff. Yeah. So it's if you're in your I mean, you should do this regardless of whether you want kids or not, but mm. yeah. Prove that you're working. Yeah. Have a legitimate business on paper so that you can and, you know, dads get more, like, payment leave now than they used to. So, now yeah. it's, like... Two weeks. Is It's... I think mum and dad can split the 20... Yeah, well, is it 20 yeah. weeks so and split... So, it's a split. total of... I think it's 18. So, it's a total of 18 and you can split it however you want. Yeah. But I think... Yeah, I think dad has to get a minimum of two. Something... Yeah. I'm. It, it's already changed since I had Parker. Yeah. So, I'm already outdated. So, like, I think... Yeah, Max Amy could claim was 16 weeks and then I could claim a fortnight as well. Yeah. Yeah, on the same so certificate. It's looking at that and being like, how do I prove that I have worked somewhere for 12 months? Yeah. Because you don't want to get to a position where you and your partner get comfortable and things happen and then you're like, that's only six months of work on paper and then you're not entitled to any payments. Yeah. So making sure that everything... There are yeah. so many, like, even just cheap ways, like, zero, mm. Henry, like, all of these, like, cheap ways to just have track record of that. The fact that your business exists. Oh, yeah. my God. Another reason just- to not take cash and to not do, like, bundles and bank transfers and all that shit. Like, your to bi- actually run a business. Yeah, your business is only, you know, worth what you get paid every week and continuously yeah. ongoing like yeah so that would be the biggest biggest thing so if you're going to want payments and you're going to want that option 
your life, you know, being a business owner is not this like life sentence where you can't go on holidays and you yeah. can't have kids because I'm not going to be able to have time with my children. Like yeah. organizing that. So one, you've got a business. I, when you came back to work, did you tear like your workload back? Did you scale yeah. it back? Yeah. yeah How did so you do it? I had two weeks totally out of office. Yeah. And then I had two weeks clients only. So I check-ins podcast like just normal week to week stuff yep and then after that i was like oh and stand out and then after that i was like okay now i'm back at work yeah and this is just back to kind of normal whatever that was um but yeah i think just thinking about that the hardest thing from a from a dad's perspective and I, the other dads i've spoken to have said the same thing or like partners have said about their husbands and stuff the tear between being the provider and being present it's like so tough yeah coming back i was like but i need to be in there so you don't have to go back to work so he can have whatever he wants but then if i'm in there i'm not here yeah it's that i think that setting what your expect expectations are beforehand is really really important on that stuff and then like we we the goal for this episode which is kind of going back and forwards was like what would you think about two years before it it might take you two years to put your business in a position that you can have the schedule that you want to be able to do that yeah it's like you didn't you had it already and you sort of had like fuck we need to do this now this is a good time let's go but if you're still doing those 45 session weeks, split shifts, too tired to do anything, never at home. Yeah. All of that. And then it's like, surprise, as a kid. How, so I, so I had to um, change those schedules because of chronic illness. Yeah. So the yeah. first thing that I did, so we can actually give this advice, um, was I looked at all of my clients. I legitimately wrote their names out. So I was really busy as a face-to-face -face trainer, you know, like we had the same story. Um, but like I put all my clients down, looked at it on paper. I used to run like events where it would be like, because I worked out of a good life and it's like, okay, cool. Like I'm going to be training at this time. Anyone that wants their deadlifts looked at, let's deadlift this week. Yep. I'm squatting this week. I, I'm doing this this week. And then I would do like, let's do coffee after because yep. I worked in a shopping center um so i would do that and then my clients kind of started yeah like you know certain people were drawn to each other and social media was very different then as well mm -hmm. um you know continuous group chats weren't really a thing yeah and i would be like okay x y and z get along together really well for a cheaper service would you three train together and did a semi-private model so you all do your own programs you train Monday, the options are two times a week or three times a week, blah, blah, blah. Training three times a week is going to cost the same as training with me once a week. Yeah. Would you train with these three ladies? I did that. And as a result, I initially, it was a third of my time gone. Then I went yeah. down to half my time. And then I would work two days in the morning and two days in the evening. Yeah, perfect. And that's how I did it because, you know, not – no, that's a lie. Three days in the morning, two days in the evening. Yeah. Um, and I have worked Saturday mornings. That was my non-negotiable to be able to fit everybody in. Yeah. And I, like, minimized my workload. That was before going online. Yeah. I think if I had my time again, that would be the other option. It would be – You'd have a list which ones can go online and then still do correct. the same model. Yeah. So – um, the social events made it easier because they were exposed to each yeah. other. Yeah. And I think that that's like a pivotal part. You're not being like, just because you have the same personality or link up with a lot of your clients, like doesn't mean they'll all get along. But in situations like that, the ones that show up to that stuff, it's like an easy, Yeah. if you want to do a semi-private model, like it's, and that was just, it just completely changed my life. And it took less than three months yeah. to flip my schedule completely. I think that if I knew what I knew now or 
information like this was easier accessible and less expensive because like back then you had to do courses and yeah um yeah i think it would have been very very different and then that was that was the game changer for yep. me and how things went. And it was sloppy and it was messy. And we still had piece of paper programs yep. that were put into the filing cabinets at the gym. And I had to go and, you know, search through my client's yeah. cabinet back then. Yeah. So it would be so much easier now, like dare I say, like so much easier now. Program for everyone at the same time and everything. That yeah. was just a real practical thing that I did mm. to shift and free up hours in my day. At this conversation um, last night, actually, about the like the arc of a PT, I reckon I've made the same money as PT similar within 20K either direction since my third or fourth year <laughs> yeah. to now, and I've been doing it 12. Yeah. The difference is when I was doing it then, it was a 40-hour work week. Yeah. Now it's probably two half days to manage my clients. And I spend the rest of the time working on everything else that we do. But the income's almost the same. It's cold, yeah? I just got cold. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what watches. And I think like the the progression that trainers should be looking for is sure you can keep chasing income, but you're going to get capped on time with sessions eventually. It's It's got to be an income lifestyle. Yeah. Like they have to meet somewhere yeah, where I- you can live a life that you want to and earn enough to do whatever you want to do with that money. But and like- the, the only way STC Learn exists is if that arc shifts. Yeah. Because like two hours on the laptop in the middle of the day doesn't build what this is. No, you're just programming for one of your fucking 30 clients. Like, yeah. You're just doing constant client programming within those small hours. Correct. Like- yeah. So that should be the goal, period. Whether yeah. like you want to have kids or not, I think that's the natural evolution of a personal trainer. Yeah. And I think... What we're seeing as well a lot is like there's a lot of gym owners out there that, well, I could do fucking heaps of sessions. So I'm going to go open a gym. And this is that like entrepreneur myth thing. It's like I'm a good technician so I can do, do the, the whole thing, do the business part. It's like it's slightly, there's different skills involved. You're just paying more overheads to do the same job and be just as burnt out without the ability to grow your business even further. Yeah, way more pressure. Yeah. Um, but that stems from not looking at how do I make this more efficient? How do I make this work better for me? How do I... Like, if you can get... Well, it only takes me 10 hours a week to manage my clients. Now I've got 30 hours a week that I can manage the facility. Yeah. Amazing. Go up in the facility. If it takes you 40 hours a week to coach and manage, when are you running the gym? Well, that's like the, what's the saying about budgeting? Like if you can't budget $200 a week, you can't budget $20,000 a week. Yeah. It's the same with time. Yeah. If you can't find ways to manage your time efficiently, labor versus working in your business versus on your business is just the easiest way to describe it. Yeah. Yeah. And that starts with like, yeah, for me, I did not go into like, my path was very different to like Ben and Jason's where I didn't open a separate branch to my business to start working on business. I didn't start working on yep. that side till I started with you guys. It was purely to free up time of day for a lifestyle because I was 23 years old and yeah. I had my nails done. I didn't wash my own hair. Like, <laughs> yeah. I went partying on the weekends, but like I was living a life that I wanted to at that age. Yeah. You yeah, know? which is awesome. Which, yeah, great. Like, yeah. amazing. And I yeah, had a chronic illness and didn't want to be face to face anymore. But like, yeah, so I think that doing that and actually sitting down and thinking rather than the must be nice to have that time free. Yeah. How can your life look one, how it wants to, and two, is that then gonna be moldable to how you want it to look when you have a child? If that's something you're planning for. Yeah, it's so interesting how I don't know if it's the need for permission if it's a fear if it's a lack of we spoke about courage during the week yep courage is probably the thing i think we would go back to z's question of like what trait you have yeah courage is definitely one it's like ah let's fucking go to gold coast and hope we sell some tickets yeah like, fuck it <laughs> that's the worst that can happen what's the worst that can happen yeah um, the potential of achieving something is far greater than yeah yeah and that 
having the courage to be like, to make a call, to make a decision and to remove barriers that you're setting for yourself. So I like, I don't want to sound like the, the fucking annoying old guy. You I've been trying, I've been trying to tell people that work in gyms, I reckon for fucking five years, you have thousands of members in your gym. You have a full book of personal training. Start selling online in your gym. Yes. And the question is like, but what do I post? It's like, post, do your Instagram. 100% do it. Grow your online community. Do all of that. You have 2,000 people you can call tomorrow. You see, <laughs> you literally see them on a daily basis. They know, yeah. you know, I'm a huge fan of training in the gym that you work at for yeah. at least a couple of sessions a week. Yeah. Not every session if you, you know, whatever, if you need to get out because I also understand that too. Train in front of them, yeah. you know, impress them. You are a walking, your work ethic, the way you train who you are is a walking billboard of your business. Yeah. They get to see that unsolicited. Yeah. Unsolicited. You have to be around them. You're going to attract those people. You have, then you've got the phones to call people. You just be a good fucking person and say hi to people. And Yeah. I've got a coach that I'm working with at the moment. So I'm helping him with his social media. And it's going really well. Like engagement's pretty much up every week. Um, content's getting better and better. He's really happy with how it's going. And he's putting on two online clients a week. And I was like, motherfucker. Yeah. Like, I'm going to just take your social media and put it on mine. Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, I just sell it in the gym. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, well, I sign them up for, they get four PT sessions with me where I make sure that they know what to do and they're cool, but I sell them that that's all they get and they're going online straight away. Done. And I talk to people and they're like, oh, but my clients, but my gym, but I'm like, this dude's working in a big box gym, yep. training gen pop people, selling fat loss, doing it really well and just prescribing it. And people are like, oh yeah. He's like, why would you pay me 150 bucks an hour when you can pay me 70 bucks a week? And come when you want to come. And, and they're I, like, oh, amazing. I think that people forget that you can build in an additional one-off session every four to six weeks into the cost of the weekly sessions. Yeah. Um, to reassure them that if you want to pay an extra 10 bucks a week, yeah. every six weeks, you and I are going to do a face-to-face -face session. You're going to bring me anything or I'm going to bring forward what I think you need to work on. Yeah. It's so, Yeah. it just, yeah. And that's a courage thing too. It's just like, okay, so I'm going to set up this as a system because, and this is giving you insight to that earlier question. What you described is exactly what I did when doors opened, when I started coaching you. Yeah. It's like, it's this much. You can come out once a month, your responsibility to book it. And I had maybe eight clients. My intent was to do two face-to-face -face sessions a week because it'd been locked in my house for two years. Yeah. I just want to hang out with people. <laughs> I want to chill. <laughs> yeah. Within four months... Maybe six months. It was like I had catch up sessions here. I was busy. I was like, oh, fuck, I want to do that. But I got a session and it started to get a little bit annoying. I just took it away. So it's like, hey, I'm not doing sessions, not booking your sessions anymore. If you ever want one, message me and we'll book it in. Yeah. Six of the eight people just stayed online for another year. Yeah. And then one of them stayed and worked with you forever. <laughs> forever. And I can, still can't get rid of her. But, <laughs> <laughs> but like the. If you want to take the step to be able to set up a lifestyle the way you want it to look when you become a parent, when even if you don't want to become a parent, you just want no. to like live like an adult. Literally. <laughs> like, <laughs> Not be married to your job. Yeah. Then you have to test models and you have to understand that people are really malleable and if the system doesn't work, it's changeable. Yeah. I am currently... Uh, so... I like a few people that in the industry that I'm around like all the time now, um, they do like they're f mainly online, but they do some like face to face stuff as well and whatnot. And, um, Oh, I'm, I'm absolutely just going to name drop now. I'm just like not going to like fucking walk around, but like, so Matt, for example, is like three weeks out of competing overseas as a yep. pro bodybuilder. And, I've like slowly like kind of you don't want to be the business coach to people like in your life. And yeah. I've like 
I'm like, you know, you don't necessarily have to do all these things face to face, like a face to face check in every week, like might be a lot, blah, blah, blah. But like over time, he's like made that decision himself and like absorbing the content and like yeah, every like Wednesday we work together. So he like sees what it's like and blah, blah, blah. And now has like, as he's gotten more fatigued and closer to competing, has like gone to online check-ins. But he prescribed that to his clients. Yeah. And he was like, cool, well, I'm this far out of comp um, for like everyone's sake, blah, blah, blah. And he's like slowly taken those out. And he's like, I've got so much time in my day now. Yeah. And I was like, yes, King. Like, yeah, yeah you do. He's like, I'm going to make changes in my business. Yeah. Like after this trip. So, you know. Yeah. It's he's already a parent, so it wasn't like parenthood that like had changed that aspect for him, but it was like something came up and he was like, Nope, this isn't fitting my lifestyle right now. But it truly is that easy to make a decision and your clients that are worth staying will stay. Yeah. And if they are confident enough in the service that you provide, the results that you get them, because that's all it comes down to at the end of the day. Yeah. They're going to stay. You can make those calls, have the courage to make that change in your business. Yeah. And it's it's actually going to be okay. I went from an all girly, everyone knows how I talk, what I'm like, super hyper feminine in my presence with like my language in my content. And I had to sit down with my clients and be like, so I'm moving to a business with two guys. (laughs) Two minutes. (laughs) And like, everyone's like, well, if you like them. Yeah. I'm sure we will. They've had no issue with people showing up at photo shoots. I've had the most amount of clients, like, yeah. bulk in person. But, like, your cl- if your clients trust you yeah. and at the end of the day, you know, I've never met a coach that's gone on holiday and their clients have been pissed off. Mm. Their clients are like, babe, you deserve you it. it. Yeah. Right? So, all of these things, if you've got that solid foundation, you can make these changes. You don't have to explain everything to your clients but you do have to explain how it's going to benefit them yeah and if you can phrase it in a way that adds that value to them i'm going to be more present so hey we're moving to whatsapp so i don't miss your instagram notifications and i can give you a good quality response great yeah hey we're going to move into these style of sessions because this time slot is one that you've preferred for so long. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're going to be sharing. It's more cost effective. You've been talking about, you know, the current cost of living. It's your ideal time slot. There are going to be people around, but you still get me watching you for three sessions a week instead of one. Yeah. And your own personalized program. Like there are just so many ways to phase it. When you are a problem solver and you provide that value, there is no reason why they'll say no. And when you prescribe as well, that's the... You're the Just expert. Being able to be like, this is what we're going to do and here's why. There's so many things came to my head while you were saying all that. We spoke <laughs> about it in Q&A yesterday. Two things that came up. One, I don't know who's selling it and who's like coaching that it's a good idea. People are interpreting hybrid coaching as you sign up as an online client and you pay for a session. But you pay for the session every single week and you're booked in every week. I'm like, that's just fucking personal training. Like now everyone has an app for their clients. Everyone has like, that's just, you're just paying for the thing. Don't pay for online and then pay for the session. And people that do check-ins on top of face-to-face coaching. So then that's exactly what I was going to say. So then they do, well, you're an online client, so you get a check-in, but then I see you face-to-face. So we talk about your dog. It's like, it makes no sense. So there's so many things. Oh my God, that broke my brain. (laughs) There's so many things that like, okay, so you have a service that you deliver to people. Some people do sessions. Some people do online check-ins. The ones that do sessions, you're with them for 30, 45, 60 minutes and they have a lot of rest periods. You can do their check-in while you're with them. And most people that want a face-to-face coach want to have a conversation, not get a Loom video. Correct. So it's actually way better for them. We had one of the coaches come through Standout PT who was spending eight hours a week doing check-ins for a face-to-face client. It's a whole day's work. I'm like, you, you're you seeing them twice a week. Just the first time you see them during the week, do the check-in. She's like, oh, I can do that. 100% you can. Yeah, I think that's like, it's easy to fall into the, yeah, I'm in like the people business and like I'm friendly with them. Yeah, but they they would still rather you do your job and them get results. Yeah. Then 
Plus, we know a lot of PTs talk about themselves a lot too. So, like, <laughs> just make it back about your client. Yeah. And then you get, like, <laughs> the pushback I always get with that. It was like, oh, well, my clients, my clients won't, my clients don't, my clients need whatever. And I'm like, for every person that says that, I can show you a trainer with the same clientele that does it. Correct. If it wasn't myself at some point. It's your, it's the way you've molded them based on the expectations you've given them. It's, yes, yeah, it's, it's your own and boundaries, your it's your own communication, <laughs> it's your inability to prescribe, it's the lack of confidence, the lack of courage that's causing those issues for you. And you have to, and that's like one thing that does come with like the fucking two lines on the stick. It's like the fear it is gone. Like, I I had a, I reckon Amy was maybe four months pregnant. I kind of been playing with the idea of one-on-one business coaching for ages, like a couple of years. Like, uh, I wonder if it's kind of a thing. I was like, oh, cool. So home birth's going to be 10 grand. Was up in three days. Yeah. It's like, there's no fucking, there's no option now. It's like, that has to happen. Yeah. And a lot of people I understand don't have the fire underneath them to make shit happen really quickly. But man. Like, but no, yes, I get, I get that as well. Um, but that fire is something that you have to light yourself. Yeah, that's something that you have to do enough work that you have to. Yeah, have a sense of urgency in wanting to be better. Otherwise, you're comfortable with where you're at. Yeah, right? and, and I think I think that's it, right? It's like to, a lot of people probably aren't even thinking about what life looks like. In like we sit down yeah. with people all the time. What What's your three year goal? Like I don't fucking know. Yeah. Like, okay, if you're doing exactly what you're doing now in three years, are you going to be happy with that? No. But what are you aiming for? Don't know. Well, it's, you're probably going to be in the same spot then. You know what I mean? Like, if yeah, you're not aiming I'm, for everything, you're going to be in the I'm same. I'm just like trying to think back. Like, when I entered the industry, it was, I worked at Boost Juice as well. Mm-hmm. So, I was at uni, stopped uni, worked at Boost Juice. And it was, I gave myself a 12-week period of paying rent to finish my job but then by the time I was six weeks in I was like no nah, fuck this I'm gonna take a, a tiny pay cut for now but then by the time that 12 weeks came around it was like I had the extra time to make the extra calls to do the thing to yeah. you know and we spoke about that courage this week like yeah I promise you if you go all in on something you'll get there faster yeah. and the sacrifice time will be significantly less 100%, yeah. um so the fire for me was not wanting to go from Epping to Preston every day. I didn't even have my license at 20. Yeah. I didn't have my license yet. So, like, it was that that I was like, fuck it. Like, I just want to be in one place and just do this now. Yeah. Then after that, it was, yeah, working forever. It was chronic illness. I didn't want to have to go through treatment and see people face to face every day for Mm -hmm. this long. After that, it was having a child. Yeah. Then for Parker, it was like, it's like, you know, plans might be different now, but it was cool. Like, When Parker's in primary school, I want to be living in, like, Queensland or something. Mm -hmm. Like, when I have less reliance on family for these, like, for this now, like, I would love to set up life in Queensland. Who knows? We won't let Augusta. But (laughs) (laughs) Well, now I've got another baby here at the gym. (laughs) So, you know, but, like, that was the thing. And it's like, cool. And in order to do that, I need to be in a position where I'm working online not be tied to one place and then fucking plans change because we're opening up a gym bitches now looking for property next to the gym yeah so like you know there's always got to be something that forward planning so yeah if it is a child no you're not going to take action quickly you're not just the thought of hmm i want to have a kid in a few years time isn't going to be enough for you to want to change but Make enough changes so that when you do get the positive on the stick <laughs> and you are in the mood to change everything because you've only got 40 weeks to do it, yeah, you're in a position where you can make those changes quick, fucking smart. Yeah. And start doing it. Whether you... Yeah. As much as this episode was initiated as like, set yourself up to have kids, set yourself up to be an adult and have relationships and a social life and your own stuff... Yeah. All of these decisions are exactly the same and it just comes from being willing to take the shot. Yeah. Try stuff. Yep. And know that you'll figure it out and then like as I'm listening to this I'm like I know that there's the person out there going, "Yeah, well I'm not as confident as you guys or I'm not as whatever or as as skilled or because there's like this perce- if I showed you guys the first videos I ever put out on social media 
and anyone says to me like, I'm not as good at creating content as you, I'm like, bruh, bruh. <laughs> I described how I put everyone in semi-private, but what I'm forget, like what I'm omitting from that yeah. was the emails that went to the wrong people, yeah. the yeah. <laughs> losing programs yeah. or forgetting to program for one person. So being like, oh, we're just extending last week's pro-. Yeah. Like all the little things like, We've the mistakes. fumbled through everything, yeah. but... Yeah, we've just never actually got it figured out. We're just trying stuff yeah. all the time. Just trying stuff. And you, if you want to get to the next stage away from just sessions, away from locked in time, away from just making a 1000 bucks a week or just making 2000 bucks a week, this is where the secrets lie. Yeah. It's just being willing to like, I'm going to try that because this is... Having the end point in mind is like, I need more freedom. Okay. There's 18 different ways you can do that. You can do small group. You can do two on ones. You can go online. You can charge more. You, you can have one day, one day off face to face coaching whatsoever and have four fucking 12 hour days if that's what you want to yeah. do. And, it, and then it's like if you're sitting here at any point saying there's two things potentially, well, I'm not like you. Get yourself around other people that do shit because that'll move the needle faster than anything else. Just spending time with people. We had a friend down a couple of weeks ago and sat down. She's looking to get into the industry. Yep. Sat down at a table of like, I think, well, came to the gym with seven of us, seven six-figure trainers that have all been in the industry. The least was like three years, I think half of us were a decade and just went like what the fuck like is this real life like just never seen anything like that before but put herself in the room yeah got exposure to it and ever since just like totally sees the world differently behaves differently just get around people that are just having a crack and then you'll sit down with them and you'll go oh they're just like me they just try it you won't feel like an idiot to say, hey, I'm going to do this thing. And rather than have, because I've got different friendship groups and yeah. I've got one friendship group that would say to me, are you sure that's <laughs> something that you want to do? And then I've got the other one that's like, well, what's the fucking worst that can happen? Yeah, yeah. And you just, the, you stay where you are. And the other one that's like, how can we help? Correct. Yeah. So put yourself in a different circle if you're currently like, I'm, I'm not that. Then if you're like my clients, my business, my gym, my town, my whatever, that kind of excuse. <laughs> Myself. Mirror. Yeah, it's Look like, it. <laughs> it's not. Uh, I've done, we've done like groups of 16 on two with Gen Pop people. I've done events with eight people doing Tough Mudder with all Gen Pop people. It's all, it's all just, yeah. it's as someone that is like, I've, I've been there. I've yeah. been there. If I lost clients, I wouldn't be able to eat. Like mm. that's, you know, I've been in that position before, like living week to week doing that. I've, I've been there. You create codependent clients due to fear of them leaving you. Yeah. And it's all language and communication based. Yeah. Like it's not your clients. It's not your location, your gym. Yeah. It's your fear of them leaving you being mirrored straight back to you. Yeah. Like The cool, coolest, the hardest and coolest thing I think about personal training business is... The hardest part is there's no clear rules. And the coolest part is there's no clear rules. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's like I've I've trained – the one thing that we always tell people that I get the most pushback, so I hardly even bother anymore, is 30-minute sessions. Yeah. And they're like, that's not long enough for my clients. I'm like, one, you train Karen. It is. Two, I've trained international uh, national-level powerlifters in 30-minute sessions. Because they don't need me to watch their accessories and the other ones don't need me to watch them do leg extensions. Like, And if you've got someone that you need to watch their leg extensions, put leg extensions in the 30 minutes. Correct. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's like you, you're you creating that own your boundary for that client yourself. It's not anything else. And a 30-minute session is one step closer to getting them to train independently without you there. Correct, <laughs> which is the whole point of driving it. But like that specific instance aside, it's just like you can make calls 
be a leader and try things. Like the whole idea of like personal training has been a career 15 years, 20, yeah, maybe 20. Like that is insane. There've been car mechanics for over a hundred years. There hasn't been personal, like we're still fucking figuring it out. No one actually knows what it is. Because even 15 years ago, most personal trainers had jobs. They were paid by the gym. They did their gym four hours. They wrote programs. They did whatever. They weren't sole traders. They weren't paying rent. They weren't social media marketers. They weren't entrepreneurs. They were just people that went to the gym and trained other people for minimum wage. Like there's, you can just do whatever the fuck you want. Just try it. If it doesn't work, just A, go back to what you were doing. And then re- Or B, what did you learn and just change it? Yeah. Okay. That's it. That time I went beep already. That was we good. had a lot of coffee. Hopefully that was useful. We didn't really do the parent thing that much, but I no, think it's it all- just live a life of freedom. Yeah. Like live don't be married to your schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Make life better for yourself. Take chances. Thanks for having me, man. Thank you. Did a good job. Thanks. Re- big dog tag earned. I I created the big dog yeah. tag. <laughs> you held up the chair just fine. Uh, okay listeners people watching listening please go and push the subscribe button if you haven't already very very important Uh, supports the show a lot gets us out to a lot more eyeballs Uh, if you want to go to the website go to stcfit.com value compass is still up there for free we're still getting a bunch of downloads for that love to see it getting heaps of feedback as well um, that it's changing how a lot of people do their business so the stuff that we spoke about today you might be able to implement different changes if you actually understand your clients a little bit better. So go check that out. If you do want to work with us, if you're maybe one of the people that just like don't have anyone in my corner that can help, and this is what Jason and I search for for ages, and I know one of the reasons Jess was like, I just want to be in a team environment, is to be around other people that think and behave the way that I want to think and behave. Stand out PT every Thursday, 90 minutes. All of our trainers get in one room ask questions, have conversations, set goals, and move forwards. Go to the Standout PT page. All the information is now on the course, the curriculum, the price, everything. We hide nothing. Go have a look. Thank you. See you next week.